I recently looked through a box of old comic books looking for one that was valued at $17,000. And as I was going through them, I learned some lessons about supply and demand. And I want you to understand those lessons too. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And once you understand that power, you're gonna understand choices and consequences and you'll be able to make meaningful changes in your community and your personal life. Now, you might not think that looking at rare comic books is gonna help you understand much about economics or about the world around us, but I'm here to tell you there are some important lessons to learn from there. Starting with this experience I had in my own house just a few weeks ago. I'm sitting in my house waiting for a friend to come over. This friend had approached me and asked if I was into collectibles. Now, I'm not really into collectibles. I don't know really what he means when he says he's into collectibles. And so I just kind of like, no, you know, I don't collect baseball cards. I don't collect coins or anything. And then he shows me some comic books. And I don't collect comic books, but I did many years ago. And now he's got my interest. I want to know what he's talking about. And he tells me that he has recently inherited a bunch of comic books from his grandpa. As a side note, this friend is going to stay anonymous throughout the entire video because those comic books are valuable and he doesn't want anybody to know that he has valuable comic books sitting in his house. So we're in my house sitting on the couch and he shows me the first two comics that he had shown me when he asked if I was interested in comic books. And they were from the same batch as the box that we were just about to open. So we knew two things from these two comics. First, these were Strange Tale comic books, and these come from an era where I know there are a lot of firsts in the Marvel Universe, so this was exciting to see that we were going to potentially come across some really interesting titles. And the second thing we learned was that we had comics number 130 and 125. Now, when we went to comicbookrealm.com to see the valuations of these comic books, we noticed their valuations, but there was something tantalizing just ahead of them. Number 110 was valued at $17,000. $17,000. We're sitting here realizing in this box is a good chance of an amazing comic book find, a collector's item that could potentially be a windfall for my friend. And we are just so excited to go through this. We looked up the details of this book before we go into the box and we know what to look for. Comic book number 110 and on the cover is a character named Paste Pot Pete. My friend go. gently opens the box and only allows one comic book to come out at a time so that way we can get the full experience of unboxing this thing. <laughs> the first few comics are promising oh but they're not what we're looking for yet. So we didn't hit the $17,000 comic right off the back, but we still got a really cool one with the first appearance of Nick Fury and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What? That, this is it. This is the origin of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Whoa! Dang. 925. Yeah. But we keep oh, going. Yeah. The next few comics are a lot like the first ones. They're worth a couple hundred dollars, but nothing big. Not the big banner numbers we're looking for. But then we get that sliver of hope we know is coming. Come on. Oh my gosh. Number 111. You about. No! Yeah. We are just one comic book away from the mother load, the $17,000 comic book, number 110. And this one's already cool. It's got the second appearance of Doctor Strange, the first appearance of his nemesis, Baron Mordu, and it's got the first appearance of Asbestos Man, which is just, you know, everyone knows and loves Asbestos Man. 111, how can the Human Torch defend himself against the Asbestos Man? <laughs> 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 so we only have a few comic books left. We know that 110 has to be in here and we start pulling out a few more when my friend asks a very insightful question. What causes the values to fluctuate so much even though these numbers are all in a similar range? This is where supply and demand come in. Supply for these comics is low. These are old comic books. You can't just print new ones, they're not going to be valuable anymore. You can't substitute for them with any other thing. So the supply is relatively inelastic and it's low. And that's going to be attractive to those collectors that really want these rare comic books. But you also have differences in demand. I imagine the supply of 
issues number 110 and issues number 111 are pretty similar. They're old. It's not like a lot of people have hung on to these comic books. But issue number 110 has the first appearance of Doctor Strange, whereas issue number 111 has only the second appearance. And so that first appearance creates a different demand that people really want that issue. And if you look at the ones that have been valuable so far, they have things like that that make these comic books higher in demand. So in issue number 111 has the first appearance of Mordu. Uh, that issue with Nick Fury, that's the first time Nick Fury appears, so that's a little bit higher. Whereas these other ones, they have similar supply, but they don't have anything special about them, so the demand is lower. This reminded me of a quote from Alfred Marshall, one of the founding fathers of today's economics. He said, we might as reasonably dispute whether it is the upper or the lower blade of a pair of scissors that cuts a piece of paper, as whether value is governed by utility or cost of production. He's saying it, whether it's supply or demand, it's both. Both of these things come together just like a scissor comes together with two blades to cut the paper. Prices are driven by both supply and demand and you need to be thinking about both when you're trying to evaluate what's going on in the world. We keep going. We have a few more left and we know number 110 is in here. We know that Pace Pot P is going to pop out and we are going to find the $17,000 comic book. Pace Pot Pete, he's on number 110. No. But this is 124. No, no. The $17,000 comic book was not in this box. It was not a letdown though. It was exciting opening up this box and finding the different comics. And he still made off with a really good haul, lots of valuable comic books worth a lot of money. But we never got number 110 worth $17,000. If you're interested in learning more about supply and demand, I recommend my video on why we eat white eggs instead of brown eggs. I also have a whole playlist of videos about superhero economics. Be sure to subscribe and we will see you next time.